Ladies and gentlemen, we are a few days away from Christmas. I think everybody has a game, at least one game in particular, that they always associate with Christmas time. Now, what game was that for me? Obviously, Mortal Kombat's always on the brain. <laughs> it's always on the mind. It doesn't matter what time or what, uh, what, what time of year it is. There's always Mortal Kombat. But there's a million other games out there. There's a game that I spent so much time playing when I was younger, back in 1998. And I've actually replayed through this game a couple of times. I'm going to talk about it briefly once I start it. But what game reminds me most of Christmas? Well, it's a game for PlayStation 1. I have it currently on my PlayStation 3. I'm going to start it up briefly. We're going to... Uh, play through just a little bit of it. We're going to watch the intro and I'm going to talk a little bit during the uh, the gameplay itself, as usual. This game makes sense uh, in regards to why it reminds me of Christmas time. Uh, let's just start it so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go, the game that I most associate with the holidays and Christmas time. Let's play it. There we go. This intro is absolutely epic. If you know what it is, right off the hop by the music if you're familiar with this game then you will know what it is pretty much right away it is none other than a squaresoft at the time squaresoft game let's watch the intro where that intro gives me chills. Parasite Eve. If you've never played Parasite Eve before, then you don't know what you're missing. This game came out in 1998. It was a Square Soft game, not Square Enix, but Square Soft. At the time, that's what they were, that's what that company was. Parasite Eve was an incredible role-playing game and I absolutely loved this game. It was, um, the story is around Christmas time. Um, it was a three disc game, I believe. And it was, it was pretty darn hard. 
not only was it hard after you beat the game, it opened up this whole other area. It was the uh, Chrysler building. The Chrysler building had, I believe, 100 floors. And the hardest thing to do was make it through those 10 floors because you could not save during that time. So it would take you anywhere from two hours to three hours to complete 10 floors. And there were some chests that you would open, say eight floors up, and there'd be a monster inside that would kill you. Oh, let's start it. That would kill you. And it was, it was unbelievably hard, but I beat that Chrysler Tower when I was younger. I mean, you know what? We just, we put so much time into these games that it was definitely doable. I don't know if I would be able to beat it anymore. I'm sure I would if I put the time in, but I mean, as an adult, I just don't have the time to anymore. <laughs> so anyways, that was the uh, the most epic intro. It sticks with me. Like in this, this game, like just gives me chills. The whole atmosphere of it was amazing. So let's just watch the intro, play a little bit of the beginning. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with this game. As you can see, it's set during Christmas time. So, I mean, it makes perfect sense that it reminds me of Christmas. And you will notice right here, too, that the Twin Towers are still standing. It's 1998. This was before 9-11. So the uh, full motion cutscenes were beautiful in this. The atmosphere was beautiful. It was just such an epic game. And I can't think of games in Christmas at the same time without thinking about this game. There you go. The one memory I have in particular Believe it or not, when my son was five years old, I booted up this game and I played it again. My son would sit there for, I think it was like a month. I'd play it, you know, a few hours a day here and there. My son would actually come and sit down beside me and, and he would watch me play. Now, he couldn't read at the time, so I would read it to him, but I would substitute words this uh, main character, for instance, her name is Aya. My son's uh, best friend at the time, her name was Taya. So, is it Aya or Ava? We will find out right now. But again, this style of graphics too is it was this. You could tell it was uh, Square, <laughs> SquareSoft, just by the the way the game moved too. And this is very, very PlayStation One. So her name was Aya, and my son's best friend at the time, her name was Taya. So what I did is I would back it up, or I backed it up, and I would make this girl, I made this girl's name Taya, and that was for my son. So when I would read the game, he would associate it with his best friend. Now this game is extremely complicated story-wise, so I would uh, substitute parts of the story to make it somewhat kid-friendly. Now, there are scenes in this uh, game where uh, it's pretty violent and there's monsters and it's and it's scary. Um, you know, I would I would definitely cover my son's eyes or I would make him not watch certain scenes, um, and I would substitute parts of the story to uh, to adapt to to a young to a young person. <laughs> But uh, anyways, that is my, uh, that's one of my um, stories in regards to this, this game. So, Taya Brea, that was funnier, Taya Brea. Anyways, let's watch a little bit of the gameplay. This is how role-playing games were back, back in the day. Everything kind of moved at a slow pace. It definitely added to the uh, longevity of the game itself. The way the characters moved, I even had my dad get the best seats for us tonight. So lighten up, we're gonna have a great time, you'll see. So you can see how the characters move too, right? PlayStation 1 had the analog controllers, so it was a cool thing. You know, you can move up to someone and they would kind of turn towards you and talk. Please take your seats, the show is about to start. Now one really epic thing about PlayStation 1 was just 
because they were CD-based games, the sound quality was amazing. When you go to talk to somebody, they would shuffle around in place. Turn this up just a little bit so we can really enjoy the, uh, the sound. And the rich atmospheric music and sound. So there was no run button in this. So this was a different style of role playing game also, where you could actually move around. I forget what the technical name for it is. But it wasn't uh, turn-based in the sense that your characters were stationary on one side and you would just go through the motions. You could actually walk around in real time while fighting the, uh, the opponent, but it was fixed to one screen when you would do it. There was a sequel to this game, which played somewhat different. I never finished the uh, second one. And then there was another sequel that they made for the uh, PSP, which was completely different from this. And the only similarities were the music and the main character. Anyways, let's watch this intro. into some more full motion video. Her voluptuousness kind of reminds me of somebody. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Now, if this doesn't get you hyped to play and see what happens, I don't know what will. But what an incredible first 15 minutes of the game. <laughs> she shoves him out. <laughs> and that's it. Then you start moving around. Right, you push the one button for menu. You know, you had weapons and such, system preferences, items, so on, so on. You couldn't save in this game unless you uh, picked up a phone. <laughs> There's phones scattered everywhere in the game itself. Square games, especially their uh, role-playing game story, were notorious for cutscenes. However, the cutscenes were always so well done that I found you wanted to see them. You couldn't wait till the next one. What you would do is you'd go 
close to two moves. Shoot it twice. Once, twice. Pretty creepy. What? What is this? My son would hold on to my arm. It was like we were watching a scary movie. Maybe he was six at the time. He might have been six. Whatever the case. What? What was that? <laughs> like she's gonna kill this girl with a pistol. There's a couple other games actually. You see a treasure chest here. Uh, open it up. Medicine. A couple other games that I associate with Christmas. I'll mention them in a second. I know she's down there, huh? What gave it away? Big hole in the ground. or what that girl it couldn't be you walk through the door and the game really gets started here and that's it you'd start trying to open doors oh it's locked I believe we get one more cutscene here too. You walk down trying to open doors. Yeah, one more cutscene. And then we'll cut the video. Looks like a nice uh, little New York sewer rat. Obviously, it would get more complex. You walk around, try to avoid it. You shoot it. You try to avoid its attack. Your power level regenerates. Boom, boom, shoot it. Get your experience points. So on and so on. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. None other than Parasite Eve. It is the game that I associate with Christmas and will always associate with Christmas till the day I die. The music in it is epic. Anytime I hear that music, which I mean, I'd have to be looking forward to hear it. Um, I think of this game, obviously. 
and uh, and that's it. So thank you for uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, checking out what reminds me of Christmas when I think of video games. There's a couple other games, obviously, that remind me of Christmas. Home Alone 2 for the Super Nintendo reminds me of Christmas. Uh, Shenmue for the Dreamcast, the first one reminds me of Christmas. There's uh, you go through Christmas in that game as well. Uh, this one doesn't make sense. It won't make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy reminds me of Christmas. I remember playing it during Christmas, that during that time for some reason, and it just it'll always stick out uh, to me as, as a Christmas game, even though it has nothing to do with Christmas. So, anyways, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.